What's going on guys, Ryan Tavazzoli here and welcome back to another video on my channel. So this is the first episode in my road to pre-season and the idea behind these videos and subsequent videos that are about to come is that I'm just going to be documenting everything a pro footballer does in his off-season. So there's going to be so many videos for you guys, uh, training drills, gym sessions, where I go on holiday in the off-season, how I like to eat. I'm hoping that for any of you young footballers out there or aspiring footballers or even professional footballers already that want to go back to pre-season firing you're going to be able to get so much information from these videos and really really get the edge on others come first day of pre-season so the three main things that i'm looking to focus on this off season are my strength my speed and also my agility so i'm going to be doing a lot of extra work on them three training components of course there's going to be dozens of football sessions technique drills and a lot of uh, fitness stuff because that's just the standard now you have to go back fit and and sharp so loads and loads of drills for you guys and i'm sure you're going to enjoy it so let's get inside now have some breakfast and i'm going to start my day by answering one of your guys questions from my previous video so see you in a bit Beautiful. All right guys, so I'm just making my breakfast. Um, I've had five days off now and I already feel recharged, ready to go. I'm gonna do three sessions today, a bit of yoga this morning. And then after that, I'm actually heading up to Birmingham to see a really, really good coach. Lucky I'm getting in with him, to be fair. He's a world-class coach, works for Team GB, trains a, a lot of top athletes, and he's actually going to write my programme for me for this off-season. So really grateful in that sense I'm able to get in and see him because I'm sure he'll work wonders for me. One major thing that's changed throughout my career since I started when I was 20, 21, um, back then it was a lot more acceptable to go back to pre-season unfit, a bit overweight, um, and you sort of use pre-season to get into tip-top shape. But now, where the game's advanced and the competition's a lot higher, we as footballers have to go back absolutely flying. You have to use your off-season to get fit. Use the pre-season not just for fitness sessions, but also for technique work and tactical work and just fine-tuning of things. All right, so question here from Reese Ford. Advice for an under 23 pro footballer dropping down into non-league? It's a great question, mate, and it's one that I can relate to myself because I played non-league. Um, my advice for you would be make sure that you're the hardest working in the room. So every day that you finish training, when you go to bed at night, make sure that you know that you've worked harder than anyone else in your team and um, that will hold you in good stead for the rest of your career. On top of that, I'd say you can never dream too big. So what do I mean by that? Aim for the stars and if you fall too, if you fall a little bit short, it's not the end of the world. So because you're in non-league now, it doesn't mean that you can't be a Premier League player. Set a long-term goal for yourself. I want to be the best Premier League player. And if you fall just a little bit short of that, you end up a championship player or an average Premier League player, you, you're going to take that now, aren't you? So. That's um, that's my advice for you, mate, and um, I hope it I hope it pays off for you. So first session of the off-season um, and I'm going to get stuck straight into it. Hypertrophy, there's going to be loads and loads of reps. We're going to exhaust the muscles, quads, calves, hamstrings, glutes. Build as much size as possible in this off-season. When pre-season starts, that's where we're going to introduce the strength phase and um, do less reps, try and get stronger before the start of the season, before we quickly get into the power phase and 
become as explosive as possible. So let's get stuck into this one. So this is the session I'm gonna do. Two supersets, third set, single leg step ups is gonna be by themselves. So we've got the quad extensions with the squats. Um, I'm gonna go straight from the first exercise into my second exercise. I'm probably gonna be fatigued, gonna get through it, but that's what I wanna do. As much time under tension throughout this session and um, we'll really start to put on some size. Big session, over 200 reps in total. So it's gonna be hard work. We'll probably do this twice a week this week and then build it up to three times a week at the back end of pre-season. Let's get into it. That's the first thing I do when I get to the gym is always have a little foam roll. Just helps loosen off the muscles, get rid of any stiffness you've got. And also, don't want to get injured in this session, so I always just have a little loosener. Mainly focus on the major muscle groups and then anywhere where I feel more tight um, than usual. I'll spend five minutes for the session just opening up my hips. Will help with the range of movement when it comes to the heavier lifts. Body and lower body, get the shoulders going, and then I'll uh, I always like to do some overhead squats as well. I feel like it just helps with the mobility when I'm actually doing my leg sessions, so like the actual squats themselves and split squats. Single leg hamstring curls with single leg split squats. Because obviously we play football, we need to focus on single leg exercises as well. It can't just be double leg all the time. For me also, I actually think single leg hamstring curls are much more effective than double legs. so quickly honestly one more set one more exercise single leg step ups my left leg, I don't want to be using any of my back leg at all, <sighs> drive solely through the front leg. <sighs> Loads of reps, legs are absolutely finished now, I'm going to be a right off tomorrow, but it's all in the back. Do this again in three days time, depending on how much, how much doms we've got, but we want to get to a point where we're not waking up the next morning with a huge amount of soreness and aches and 
we can just go again. That's when you start to notice gains, so. Really good session in the bank. I'm still sweating now, and as you can see from my whoop, my heart rate is still really high. I finished the session 15 minutes ago, but that's what I need. First session, straight into it. I want to get to the point where I'm able to wake up tomorrow morning without any DOMS and we're able to repeat the session in two days time. That's when you really start to notice gains. Big session in the bank, get back now, have a bit of lunch, recover properly and I'll be back here this afternoon for a run in a football session. So this is my post gym meal. Some mixed nuts, three chicken breasts. We're only day five into the off season so can still eat things like this once in a while, treat ourselves before we start getting really serious with the diet. Plus, loads and loads of protein here, which is what we need if we're gonna to wanna to build size. I'm gonna eat this now and I'm gonna answer one more of your guys' questions, so stay tuned. All right guys, so I've just had a shower. I'm just doing a bit of recovery. I'm on the Normatex now before I um, get my second session of the day in. And I'm just reading a few of your questions here. And I've got one from Hartim Abdul. He asks, after a good performance, just as the one you've had against Middlesbrough, what is the one thing that you always do in terms of trying to keep that confidence you've just gained heading into the next game? So we all know how massive confidence is in football. And um, for me, keeping that confidence up after a good game like Middlesbrough, what I'll do is make sure to take the momentum for the Middlesbrough game into that week of training. So have good training sessions throughout the week. And then... Leading into the next game, I'll um, re-watch my own clips from the Middlesbrough game. So, all the things I did well, and then I'll feel very confident going into that next game. So, it's a little tactic I use. I like to uh, watch, my, watch my clips back from good games and gives yourself that confidence and feeling of, um, for me, a centre-half, feeling of like invincibility going into that next game. So, um, it's a little tactic I use and uh, I appreciate the question, Hartin. down five to go halfway through Ah, session done. Two big sessions in the bank. 
my quads and calves are on absolute fire. Just one minute on, one minute off, that's such a blow. All right. Gonna get some good food in me, get myself on. Good morning, guys. Just about to have my breakfast. Um, feeling very leggy today. And I thought I'll answer one more of your questions before I wrap this video up. Got one here from JB2. And he asks, what is your favorite football training tool? As you will have seen in a few of my previous videos, I've got a fair few training tools that I like to use. Uh, Normtech recovery pumps, foam rollers, massage guns, etc., etc. But for me, hands down, the best thing that I, I do use, and I'll show you why, is my, um, is my Whoop wristband that I wear. Woke up today, feeling really leggy, didn't feel great. Um, I'll show you something now. As you can see, my recovery today, I'm actually in the red zone, 31%. And that's just um, Whoop telling me that I need to rest, basically. And if I did go out there and push myself today, I'm at a risk of um, getting injured. So yeah, yeah, I'd say that one, JB. Get yourself on Whoop, you'll enjoy it, mate. So guys, it's been a pleasure. Uh, if you like this video, please let me know in the comments below and uh, hit that like and subscribe button. Um, the next time I'll be seeing you, I'll be heading up to Birmingham uh, to train with the world-class GB coach. So until then, catch you guys in a bit.